Honorable Members of Parliament and Honorable Judges, you may now be seated. Honorable Members of Parliament, Honorable Judges and Honorable Speaker, His Excellency, the President of the Republic of Fiji, will now address the Parliament. Your Excellency, the Honorable Speaker of the House, the Honorable Acting Chief Justice, and Honorable Members of the Judiciary, Honorable Prime Minister, Honorable Cabinet Ministers and Assistant Ministers, Honorable Leader of the Opposition, Honorable Members of Parliament, Your Excellency, High Commissioners, Ambassador members of the diplomatic corps, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. Assemble Munaka, Namaste, Salam Alaikum, Hi Mother, a very good morning to you all. Together we open this 2020 21 session of Parliament in the midst of a global crisis. Beyond our borders, the spread of the deadly novel coronavirus is the most serious it has ever been. The rates of infection are at all-time highs. The loss of life commands the bullet. Early and did not, or did the hard work of looking down the country to protect our people. In a truly patriotic whole of nation effort, we achieved what few countries could. We contained the virus. It has been more than 220 days since the last case of COVID-19 among the public, and together we potentially saved thousands of Fijian lives. And on the 10th of October, as a COVID-contained country, Fijians marked the 50th anniversary of our independence in good health and in good spirits. We have every reason to celebrate what we have achieved. Never before in a half century has History have we encountered and overcome a challenge as deadly as COVID-19. Our doctors and nurses and the members of our discipline forces deserve much more than our gratitude. For their sake as well as our own, we must remain vigilant and disciplined as we face the threat that is very much before us and very much alive. We may feel safe from the suffering of this pandemic. Here in our COVID contained country in the middle of the Pacific, I can assure you that we are not. This virus will never offer humanity an unconditional surrender. Countries, states, and cities that thought that they had this virus on the ropes have seen the return of this insidious, invincible, invisible, and unrelenting enemy. To everyone in this chamber and to everyone tuning in from across the country, I urge you, do not forgo the health practices and habits we have adopted this year. For starters, I hope everyone here has downloaded and installed the Care Fiji mobile contact tracing application. As parliamentarians, as dutiful parents and grandparents, and as caring children, we must remain ever alert and ever mindful of the consequences of any lapse in caution. We have worked too hard and sacrificed too much to give ground in our shared campaign to contain the virus. Fiji's public health response was an enormously complex effort, though I believe we owe our success to two simple truths, our faith in one another and our respect and adherence to science. Our success answered countless prayers and affirmed the science-based health protections we decisively implemented. It has been a testament to what our people can achieve when, our, when we put our nation first, respect the rule of law, conquer our panic, and place our trust in strong leadership and in each other. That spirit of courage and cooperation matters more than ever today as we strive to keep the virus at bay while building back our devastated economy. Because, make no mistake, our ability to reestablish the strong economy we have built over so many years 
is very much at stake. Our people's livelihoods are at stake. And building our economy back will take an effort as decisive, as cooperative, and as patriotic as what it took to contain the virus itself. Mr. Speaker, we have a constitution that enshrines a vast array of civil, political, and social economic rights that the government must make every effort to realize and defend for all Fijians. Alongside the right to health is the right to economic participation, the right to water, the right to education, the right to work and adjust minimum wage, the right to food and water, the right to equality and freedom from discrimination, the freedom of religion and other rights which are all pivotal to the liberty and well-being of every Fijian. The right to health may have taken on a new significance due to the coronavirus, but it does not supplant the other constitutional rights of our citizens. With the secure and well-managed border between our people and the coronavirus, my government will continue the progressive realization of our Constitution's mandates and in every way it can by bringing back employment, incentivizing investment, maintaining the socio-economic and civil and political rights that underpin our society, pursuing sustainable development, building our climate resilience and breathing new life into our economy. To do so, we must build on the progress of the last national budget and our freedom COVID saving economic recovery framework. In recognition that many Fijian families are enduring the hardest year they have ever known, we must continue our support for all those who need it. The Leader of the Opposition, Honourable Members of Parliament, Excellencies, Ladies and Gentlemen. The prospects for global economic growth have deteriorated from uneven in the months prior to this pandemic to wildly uncertain. To quell economic anxiety and maintain confidence, Governments globally have borrowed and spent tens of trillions of dollars to keep their economies, their industries and businesses above water and to maintain the livelihoods of their people at some acceptable level. Now, the spe spending breaks records by the day. The total global stimulus already more than tripled that of the global financial crisis. Among many examples, the United Kingdom, the world's sixth largest economy, has seen its sharpest economic contraction since the 1700s. In response, the United Kingdom is borrowing at levels unmatched since the Second World War. All around the world, all the indicators tell us this new era of flexible fiscal policy may be with us for quite some time. Due to the travel-related nature of many of our most important industries, small island states like Fiji have been hardest hit by this global economic emergency. Our paths to recovery are the longest. Therefore, our efforts must be the most ambitious. Through the coming months and years, the pace of our recovery through our industries, our business houses, and our people's employment must indeed exceed that of the rest of the world. To achieve that, we must take a considered view of where the world economy stands today and state a confident position in where it is headed. We can take some comfort in the fact that several newly developed vaccines are showing promise. Though we anticipate there will still be many long and hard months ahead, we will not succumb to cynicism. As a wave of newfound economic confidence slowly yet surely sweeps across the world, we will keep our gaze set on the opportunities available to us in the not too distant post-COVID future. For all the uncertainty of that future will bring, we can be sure the oceans and climate crisis have not rested for this global pandemic. They are still upon us. The rising seas are claiming our coastlines. Our reefs are disappearing. Storms are becoming stronger. Farming is being impacted by changing weather patterns. Now, these impacts will no doubt intensify. No matter the crushing economic impact of this pandemic, building our resilience cannot be relegated to the back burner. We either adapt now or risk everything our people have built over the last 50 years. As we press ahead in our work to drive bluer, greener, more inclusive and more sustainable development, the government's focus in this parliamentary session will be centered on three key priorities. Our containment of COVID-19, 
our economy's recovery and our response to the climate, oceans and biodiversity crisis. Our commitment to remain COVID contained must be ingrained in all the work of this August Parliament. It must materialize through the funding we grant our frontline health officials, the equipment we provide them, and through our advocacy on the world stage to secure equitable access to an effective COVID-19 vaccine. Particularly as we look to re-engage economically with the world, the health of every Fijian must sit at the heart of our recovery. Though we remain mindful that the coronavirus is only one of many serious threats to Fijian lives, my government will continue to ensure life-saving treatments, such as kidney dialysis, are made both affordable and accessible to our people. And we will meet the scourge of non-communicable diseases with a nation effort to strengthen Fiji's nutrition security and encourage lifestyle changes that set Fijians on better, healthier paths. Across our efforts to provide Fijians with the best possible advice and treatment, we must deepen our collaboration across the medical field, including the general practitioners and private practice who can and must join us at the forefront of addressing every health challenge Fijians face. Our people's well-being also cannot be separated from our economy's recovery. We cannot settle for providing struggling Fijians with short-term assistance. We owe them each the opportunity to work again in jobs they have loved, in established sectors with potential for growth, as well as in emerging, cutting edge. We must use this chance to fast-track our merit-based, people-first organizational culture throughout every ministry and department, <coughs> statutory body, and public enterprise. And we must step the efficiency of the private sector through outsourcing and public-private partnerships. Unshackled by the most severe of our health restrictions and buoyed by the historic government stimulus, the Fijian economy as well has the chance to strategically enhance its long-term aids by positioning itself for opportunity in the new normal. So we must take great care to avoid the pitfall of an unequal recovery. In too many developed countries, multinational companies have survived and even thrived throughout this crisis as smaller businesses have fallen through the cracks. Fiji's recent progress in dramatically reducing inequality in our society cannot be thrown off course by falling prey to the same global trend. We will add to the tens of millions of dollars in concession loans we have granted in support of micro, small and medium enterprises. For the first time, we have collaborated with the Fiji Institute of Accountants, the Fiji Chamber of Commerce and Industry, Women in Business and the Fiji Commerce and Employees Federation to assess applications for these concessional loans and we look forward to continue working with private sector organizations to help fuel an inclusive recovery and grow the role of all businesses, including MSMEs, in our long-term economic expansion. In many countries, COVID-19 shutdowns are cut directly into students' access to education. We are blessed that young people are free to continue Fiji's education revolution in classrooms across the country. Every year, we add new graduates to the most talented and capable workforce in Fijian history. That surging human capital is a precious resource that must not be wasted. Young Fijians' great ambition is rivaled only by their innovative potential, which can spur the badly needed modernization of businesses, entire industries, and indeed, in the civil service as well. As economies far and wide adopt the new economic realities of this pandemic and beyond, young Fijians must be afforded the opportunity to bring their new ideas to bear. The long-standing trend of digitization, for example, has accelerated at a breakneck pace. Businesses are serving customers through new arrays of digital tools. Local, regional, and international meetings are being convened through online platforms. Whole industries, whole industries are being reshaped. Fiji was prepared for this new economy well before COVID-19, thanks to a decade of reform and investment in the information and communications technology sector, which is now spearheaded under the digital Fiji umbrella. And the region's leader, or as the region's leader in digitization, we must continue to leverage digital technology to improve the reach of government 
and financial services and ensure the Fijian economy remains competitive in a rapidly digitizing world. It is one key we may build our resilience to external shocks like pandemics as well as climate change. On the climate front, Fijians remain on the front lines of the worst climate impacts while Fijian voices stay at the forefront of the global campaign to curb emissions and build a more resilient world. We cannot relent in adopting Fiji communities here at home nor in advocating for the urgency of achieving net zero carbon emissions by 2050 from all nations on earth. The most powerful way we lead is through our example. By decarbonizing how we live and how our economy grows, by achieving our commitment to the 100% sustainable management of our oceans, we help inspire the same around the world, ultimately securing a future for our planet that our children and our grandchildren deserve. Those are aspirations are embodied in the government's legislative agenda for this session, some of which has carried over from the last session due to the pressing work of containing Fiji's outbreak of COVID-19. Government, I beg your pardon, Parliament will consider the Climate Change Bill, the Intellectual Poverty Laws, Patents, Trademarks and Design Bills, the Volatile Substances Abuse Control Bill, the Search and Rescue Bill, the Child Justice Bill, the Child Care and Protection Bill, as well as conduct a wide range of reviews of legislation ranging from public health to customs to the legal framework supporting our disciplined forces. Honorable Speaker, Honorable Chief Justice, Honorable Prime Minister, Honorable Cabinet Ministers, Honorable Leader of the Opposition, Honorable Members of Parliament, Excellencies, Ladies and Gentlemen. Before I formally open this new session of Parliament, I want to thank all those behind the scenes who helped us mark Fiji's 50th birthday this past October as as all the Fijians who proudly join us at events across the country and who tuned in to the celebrations from home. We did not imagine our 50th year of independent history would be met by a challenge as serious as COVID-19, yet it did not break us. When history tells of how we marked our half century of independence, it will remember our resilience. Coming generations will remember our patriotism. They will find inspiration in the strength of our spirit. And I believe they will recall this year as a moment where, amid great difficulty, Fiji found opportunity that paid dividends over decades for the well-being of our people, for the modernization of our economy, and for our leadership to secure all people and our planet a better future. The work of the next 50 years begins with this session, which I now have the honor to declare officially open. May Almighty God bless you all. May God bless Fiji. Thank you.